Father, to pour out the Spirit on Him, on us, in this place here, on all of us here, so that we may be filled and used for His glory. Let us raise our voices and sing to the Lord. Let us raise our voices and sing to the Father.
worship the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we invite your power, we invite your presence, we invite you into our midst, O oh Lord. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, we'll be there in their midst. We are gathered in your midst, O oh Jesus. We believe in you. We belong to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, <laughs> Psalm 22, 3, we read. Psalm 22, 3, we read like this. You are holy, Amen. enthroned on the praises of Israel. The you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Sisters and brothers, you know that you did not create yourself. God is your maker. And your body is his temple. And he desire to live inside your body. It happens when you praise God. Your body becomes his temple. He comes inside. And every darkness of your body, everything that is evil. Some of you are, you hate sin. But you feel you repeat the same sin. Remember, with our own power, we can only commit sin. We need grace of the Lord to overcome any sin, any bad habit. Grace means the indwelling presence of our Holy Trinity, one God. His indwelling presence comes inside us. When we get out of ourselves and praise the Lord at the top of our voice, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you want Jesus to come and take over your body? Yes. Many have guilt feeling. When you think about the past, the sins you may have committed in your flesh, in your body, you feel so ashamed of yourself. But remember one thing, when Christ comes inside your body, you are get rid of, you are delivered of guilt feeling, sorrow, self-pity, self-hatred, you become a new temple of God. Look at Mary Magdalene. She was a prostitute. She was possessed with seven demons. This same woman became an apostle of apostles because Christ entered inside her. That same Christ Jesus is here in this blessed sacrament. Do you believe that? Yes. Raise both your hands. Close your eyes. Don't look at anyone. No human can help you. Your Lord can. Let him enter inside you. Just repeatedly say hallelujah, hallelujah at the top of your voice and worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Like that hallelujah. of the multitude. Hallelujah. Like that of the strong hallelujah. waterfall. Let his name be honored. Let the Lord come down from heaven. Dwell inside the people. Worshipping at the Holy Family Co Cathedral in Quiet City. Lord, we invite you. We enthrone you as the King of our life. We declare and we proclaim you are our Lord, our King, and our Master. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of all creation. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the Good Shepherd. You are the Bread of Life. You are the Word made flesh. You are the Truth, the Life, and the Way. You are the Beginning and the End. You are the Creator of the whole universe. You are the Word. You are the Door. You are the Wine. You are everything. Without you, nothing is created. We enthrone you. We lift your name on high. You are our Master. We give you all glory and honor. We give you all worship and adoration. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. that call his name. You lost your father, your mother. Some of you lost your parents years back. You always had this agony in your heart. Who is there for me? Your heavenly father is standing in front of you, hugging you. Call him Abba, Abba Father.
close your eyes keep your hands on your heart your lord jesus knows that you lost your father and you are absent you lost your mother you could not even help her the way she worked hard and helped you you witnessed the death of your son your daughter you lost your beloved one your husband your wife he knows it is consoling you the lord is telling you release them release your parents ian release those departed let them be in the presence of god vincent god is consoling you paloma god is consoling you sara god is consoling you henry god is consoling you ruben god is consoling you charlie god is consoling you helen god is consoling you they are mine the lord is telling your father your mother your beloved one they are mine says the lord i called them to me release them some of you are praying so hard because your beloved one is in the prison you don't know what to do some are not here even in abroad in the prison your lord is all over the way you pray the lord is going to set them free release them unconditionally and miraculously believe in him is real is your god open your eyes do you want to kiss the feet of jesus oh, yes. yes i do it on behalf of you you can see how to do it kindly be seated God is good all the time all the time God is good one day we were praying for a person and we got a name and we asked who is this Judy she said i don't know i don't remember anyone by this name judy then the holy spirit said like this there is no one who is a stranger who is a foreigner for god then immediately she said i remember there was a lady from another country walked with me and i know she is going through a difficult time because she is divorced then we said the holy spirit is reminding you to pray for judy she said i was never in friendship with her we never talked much i know her name is judy if you ever think your brother or your sister has no connection with you you are wrong i am in rwanda now in divine retreat center rwanda when i reached there the prices for bread and was very low within no time it was more than the double they speak kenya rwanda so i asked them why the price is too high they don't speak much english there are people who speak but many don't they are telling me they call priest as padiri padiri means priest padiri ukraine padiri ukraine i said what is ukraine you know this is rwanda not at all connected with ukraine they are telling a cost to increase the price for the things that a war is going on between russia and ukraine the holy spirit has immediately reminded if i think let the people of ukraine live their life we are wrong we are christians we are the members in the body of christ there is no one who can just say 
i am independent we are never independent we are all connected we are all related so we need to pray for one another we need to pray for ukraine we need to pray for russia we need to pray for all the war torn countries and i have seen we pray it and we need to pray it more otherwise it is going to affect us even if otherwise we are all brothers and sisters praise the lord praise the lord there is no stranger for jesus we are all siblings in the presence of god we are born in different parts of the world in different nationalities different cultures different languages but remember we have only one heaven praise the lord So now we are going to start this prayer simple prayer Jesus master have mercy on I pray for father Noel father will pray for me ask the name of your neighbor we are going to pray for one another even those who stand outside those who are in the tent those who are in the hall those who are on the side of the road wherever you are if you listen to this kindly ask the name of your brother your sister one person each two of you ask the name get the name we are going to make this small prayer jesus master have mercy on father noel come holy spirit jesus master have mercy on john come holy spirit pray for your neighbor when you pray for others we need to pray loud we pray 10 times jesus master have mercy on father noel come holy spirit jesus master mercy on father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit jesus master our mercy and father noel come holy spirit glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit let's look at jesus and say my lord jesus thank you so much thank you so much for being with me for being with me for being inside me for being inside me for tolerating me for tolerating me there is no one in this world there is no one in this world who can love me who can love me without getting tired without getting tired you are so great you are so great my lord jesus my lord jesus i have never seen someone like you I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you from the bottom of my I love you with all my heart. I love you with all my heart. May your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. May every knee shall bow. May every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess. Every tongue confess. That you are the Lord of all creation. That you are the Lord of all creation. Hallelujah. 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 Yesterday we were reflecting about sin and today we are going to reflect about sin itself. This sin is called hatred. If God is love, Satan is hatred. If there is any aspect of hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, revengeful feelings in our heart, that means Satan is indirectly influencing us. and we should know our enemy your enemy is not your husband your wife your children your neighbor your priest or a lawyer but we do have only one enemy the name of our enemy is called satan put it inside your heart there is no human person who is your enemy it is the evil one praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord, praise the lord. and we are here to renounce him by forgiving our brothers and sisters i do remember this incident i told you that i was in kenya then i was in europe then i came back for a new mission in rwanda in africa in kenya whenever the people see the priest they bring all their religious articles to be blessed 
even if they are blessed once they will again bring it whenever they see priest they need blessing their rosaries their religious articles they file the document before they go for an interview before they go for an exam before they go for a promotion they take their files to get it blessed their exam instruments to get blessed so that they do well that's what they believe sometimes because we have so many people for counseling it will not be possible to ask anything we just bless it one day a lady came with a document and she told father you bless this document then we just asked what is this file because there are many people in the queue she said you first bless it later i will explain we told her no you first say so that we pray for that intention then slowly she is telling because there are people behind this is a divorce petition file then i said being a priest i am never permitted to bless a divorce she said we are separated i need support for my children is very important then we told her this is malachi chapter 2 verse 16 malachi chapter 2 verse 16 the scripture says thus says the lord i hate divorce what does the lord say i, I hate divorce. you so i will repeat thus says the lord you will repeat I hate divorce. We are going to repeat it seven times. Thus says the Lord, I hate divorce. 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 Let no one let no one ever misguide you do you want to do something that god hates remember i'm not here to judge or put into guilt anyone who is already divorced we have already seen at 1730 god will not consider the period of ignorance but now he wanted everyone everywhere to repent so this word of god if it is the holy scripture and the word is god himself if he says he hate divorce how much god wanted family to be established so the one who is against family life is satan himself if marriages are not taking place if your children are undecided about their family their marriages that means satan is infiltrating into them if god hates divorce he loves marriage is satan who loves divorce praise the lord praise so we told this woman are you telling me to do something that god hates i can never bless a divorce only marriage then she is telling me father you first listen what i have to say my husband is a drunkard he is violent he beats me he does not go to church he does not even want me to go to church how can i live with a man who is an unbeliever who persecute me who does not even want me to pray we told her 1 corinthians 7:14 first corinthians 7:14 the unbelieving husband is made holy through the wife god knows that your husband is an unbeliever he does not pray or does not believe that is why the lord has given you this husband you have a duty to pray for him because god believes in you god trust in you god knows that you are a prayerful woman that you are a believer that's why god has given you this husband together let us look on to the screen let us read together for the unbelieving husband everybody together louder for the unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife marriage is a sacrament sacrament means 1 corinthians 7 16 1st corinthians 7 16 oh wife all that you have to know is that you have to save your husband so it's a vocation to save your life partner removing supporting in his weakness so we explain to her just because he's an unbeliever he's wild and you cannot get divorced because god has given you this great profound duty to pray for the soul of your husband and save his soul then she's again telling me father you are not getting what i am saying 
if i stay with him he can kill me he is not just an unbeliever he is a wicked person he is so violent he is so wicked then we asked her because your husband is wicked do you want his soul to be lost ezekiel 3311 ezekiel 3311 ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 the scripture says say to them as i live say to them as i live i do not rejoice in the death of a wicked person but that the wicked turn from their ways and live turn back turn back from your evil ways for why will you die o house of israel kindly please look on to the screen read together louder everybody say to them as i live says the lord god i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from their ways and live turn back turn back from your evil ways for why will you die o house of israel in the diary of saint maria faustina kowalska she wrote in this way the father does not want even a wicked person to be lost he excludes no one from his mercy just because your husband is wicked do you want your husband be lost Matthew chapter 18 verse 14 Jesus revealed the heart of his father and is written my father in heaven does not want any of these little ones be lost your father god does not want your husband be lost do you want your husband be lost do you want you want to just get rid of your husband because he's a wicked person but do you know this is just against what your heavenly father desire for you then she is again telling me father please listen to me my husband when he gets drunk he pulls my hair he broke my cell phone he choked my neck he wanted to kill me if i stay with him he can even kill me he told her you have to know when your husband is pulling your hair actually he is telling you darling pray for me Actually when he is choking your neck he is actually making a prayer request pray for me <laughs> is because you are not praying for me i am wicked i am a drunkard i am violent with my own power i cannot stop drinking alcohol i cannot stop persecuting you that is why jesus said this is matthew 5:44 matthew 5:44 jesus said love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you anyone who is persecuting you it can be your husband your wife your employer your coworker your colleague your neighbor your lawyer or your son anyone who is persecuting you giving you a hard time actually literally they are begging for your prayers so that they may receive god's profound mercy and they may become a new person remember with human power no one can become holy it's a free gift this gift is been poured out upon anyone who plead and pray for this ask and it will be given the lord said and he is there to graciously pour out his mercy upon anyone who is praying love your enemy you know our forgiveness is incomplete unless we start loving that person our forgiveness is incomplete there are people who don't talk to each other they live under the same roof they just live a life their hearts are far away the lord is telling if you want to love your enemy is only possible through prayer anyone who is persecuting you they are asking you can you please pray for me i cannot change my character with my own power i need grace i need divine mercy can you pray for me then she asked for the what kind of prayer is what you are telling me to pray i tried all kinds of prayers now i don't know what kind of prayer we told her pray tobit 817 tobit 817 
This is the second part of that prayer. Raguel and his wife is teaching Tobias and Sarah to make this great prayer, prayer of blessing. You can pray after me. Be merciful to them, O Master. Be merciful to them, O Master. Keep them safe. Keep them safe. Bring their life to fulfillment. Bring their life to fulfillment. In happiness and mercy. In happiness and mercy. Be merciful to them, O Master. Be merciful to them, O Master. This is book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 17. Be merciful to them means we told her, we asked her what is the name of her husband. She told me, Joseph is the name of her husband. We told her to put the name of Joseph and pray like this. Be merciful to Joseph, O Master. Repeat. Be merciful to Ronnie, O Master. And keep him safe. And keep him safe. Bring his life to fulfillment. Bring his life to fulfillment. In happiness and mercy. In happiness and mercy. All the married women, raise your hands. I hope you remember the name of your husband. Put his name and make this prayer of blessing. Put his name. Don't put the name of anybody else. Your husband's name. Be merciful to... I put Joseph. You have to put the name of your husband. Pray aloud. Be merciful to Joseph. Keep him safe. Bring his life to fulfillment in happiness and mercy. Be merciful to Joseph, my husband or master. Keep him safe. Bring his life to fulfillment in happiness and mercy. Did you get the prayer? Yes, sir. And all the husbands who are married. Raise your hands, all the husbands. I hope you remember the name of your wife. You are one wife. I put Mary, you put the name of your wife. At least once. We need to pray and bless our life partner, isn't it? At least once before we die. We need to make this prayer. It's, it's important. We should not depend upon the prayer of our wives. One man told me, Father, my wife is so prayerful. So I asked him, what about you? I don't pray because she's praying too much. <laughs> Let us pray. Be merciful to Mary, my wife or master. Pray. Not Mary, your wife's name. <laughs> Keep her safe. Bring her life to fulfillment. In happiness and mercy. Be merciful to my wife Mary, O Master. Keep her safe. Bring her life to fulfillment. In happiness and mercy. Sisters and brothers, put this prayer inside you. This is not only for your wife or your husband, anyone who is persecuting you. Why they persecute you? Because their life has never come to fulfillment. They have fear. They have insecurity feeling. They have anxiety. Maybe a husband lost his father. Since then he has this fear. God has given you as a partner so that you fill that gap of your husband. So that his life may come to fulfillment in happiness and mercy. It's your duty through prayer to fill that emptiness of your husband. It's your duty as a husband to fill that emptiness of your wife who suffered too much in her younger days. We can accuse like the evil one, but you can also pray that she may receive that fulfillment in her life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about a lady who came to receive blessing to get divorced, and we said, No, you pray for your husband. She said her husband's name is Joseph. We asked her, do you have a rosary? She said, yes. We told her to take it in your hand and pray the prayer as I tell you to pray every day before you go to sleep. Be merciful to my beloved husband, Joseph, or master. Keep him safe. Bring his life to fulfillment in happiness and mercy. We told her to repeat this prayer every day, every day, hundred times. Rosary, just to count. Then only you sleep. She prayed. Sisters and brothers, we have retreats in our center in Nairobi in Kenya. After one month, after the retreat, there were so many people. One man came. She is speaking. She wanted to just, he wanted to speak. And he said, Father, my name is Joseph. And I never used to go to church. And one day, I was surprised. My wife is praying for me. Be merciful to my beloved husband, Joseph. 
Since we got married, I never heard her calling me beloved husband and praying continuously. I was surprised. One day I followed her and entered into your church. Ours is not a church, but for them everything is church. He said, I entered into your church. I was touched. Father, I believed if my wife can change, why can't I change? I stopped alcohol. We give word of God to people. Word of God. When they come for counseling, we don't speak much. Word of God. Some people come and tell me, Father, I read the word you gave me. No answer. Still jobless, not married, no children, nothing. Will something happen? Or you are cheating me? I told her, Jesus said, My word is a seed. If we plant a seed today, there will not be fruit tomorrow, but definitely there will be a fruit. I asked her, do you get angry? She said, I, I used to, but now I am normal. I asked her, do you think this is not a miracle? God first works within, not outside. For God, your soul is more important than your job. Understand this. Today as you are here for this retreat, maybe you are so much concerned about your daughter, your son, your brother, your, your marriage, your children, your visa, your work permit, you have too many problems, sicknesses all over the body. Remember, but God is more and more concerned about your soul. Do you think your soul is more important than your body? Do you think that your soul is more important than your body? Yes. So he has brought you here for something higher, something deeper, something more important. That is why he wants us to pray for those who persecute us. So that we may become Matthew 5.45. So that we may become the children of the heavenly father. Those who forgive, Abba Father comes quickly to them and takes up his fatherhood. He adopts you as his child because Abba Father is so pleased with those who forgive. Praise the Lord. 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 I have this experience in my life. I had, this is my personal experience. I had my passport. My passport had a problem. I was in Kenya, it had no surname, it only had given name. Without surname, you will not get work permit in Italy. I was sent by my superiors to go to Italy. So I went to my, this visa office, the immigration office in Nairobi, this is Indian High Commission. So when I went there, uh, I submitted my document because I cannot apply for a new visa without getting new passport. So I need the passport to be changed. So I went there to the office and I requested if the names cannot be changed into Father Anthony, now my name is not like that, it, it is a different name. So I said, I want to change my name. Then he said, it's not possible. So it, if it is to be done in where it is issued, it is a three months process, but I only had one month to do all this and to travel. But they said, minimum three months. This immigration officer told me, it's not easily possible. Then I told him, sir, there is an option. I understand there is an option of split the name. You know, my given name, there are two names. You can split it and put it into surname because surname is a must. Then he told me, don't come and teach me the laws. I know I'm here in this office. Then I told him I'm a priest. Then he said, if you are the priest, you should be the first one to keep the law. Don't come and teach me the law. <laughs> He was very angry and upset. And I found his name is like Ramakrishnan. It's written here. He's from my place only, from Kerala only. And he's getting very angry with me. But I told him, sir, but I need this document to be changed. He said, don't come and teach me what to do. Follow the process. And he told me, get out of this place. Follow the process and you come. But for me to follow the process, I will not be able to travel. So I went to the waiting lounge. Then I remembered one thing. I advise people too much. 
I tell people, when people persecute you, pray for them. Then I came to know, it's easy to advise and it's very difficult to pray. <laughs> I took my rosary and I started to pray. Be merciful to Ramakrishna, O Master. Keep him safe. <laughs> Bring his life to fulfillment in a happiness and mercy. I prayed. And there is a big glass door in front of me. This is high commission. Big glass door in front of me. And I can see this officer in front of me far. And I am there praying. Be merciful to Ramakrishna. You know, it's not easy even to pronounce that name when you are hurt. You, you don't want to bless those who hurt you. It's very hard even to tell them, telling God to bring his life to fulfillment. The one who just shouted at me, insulted me. And now I am blessing him. Be merciful to him, O oh Master. After some time, I look through the glass door. I know God can, this is Isaiah 45, 2 and 3. I will go before you, level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I told the Lord, I know you can just remove this glass door. He can remove iron doors. Then what about this glass door? He can pierce this prayer and touch his heart. So I'm looking at his face, whether his face is changed, smiling. He was always very harsh with a long face. I'm looking whether there is a change because I am seriously praying. After some time, I came to know time is 12 o'clock. 12 means it is the embassy is going to be closed. Then there's a big gap and I have to go back for my service. Then I thought I will try again. So I hid my rosary like this and I'm praying. I just went ahead and I told him, sir, please, I, I need your help, please. Then he, again he saw me, he said, mister, I told you it's not possible. Go to that place. So he got angry, he told me to go to another office. That office is a cubicle that is from a Kenyan person in that office. He has attended one of our Bible conventions. He immediately understood that I'm a priest. He took my documents, he checked, and he told me, Father, let me try. You keep all this, give me your email and your phone number. I gave everything. Just seven days, this man in this cubicle, the office, called me and told me, Father, your new passport is ready, come to collect it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I checked, this document was issued by Rama Krishnan. <laughs> Not only that, this man told me, the commissioner, the officer wanted to see you. Come to your place, sisters and brothers. What this man was telling me, Father, you say you are a priest. You wanted your document, but have you ever prayed for me? Have you given me the treasure that you have inside you? Colossians 1, 26, 27. This mystery that was hidden for generations, now the Lord has revealed, has desired, decided to reveal to his saints that Christ is in you. Christ is in you. The mystery, there was a secret. That was hidden for many generations. That secret is Christ is hiding inside everyone. Do you believe that? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, Christ is inside you. Christ is inside you. Christ is inside you. Praise the Lord. Not only inside the baptized. Inside everyone who has life, John 1, 3. Not one thing was created without him. So the moment you invoke the name of Jesus, the moment you pray and ask Jesus to touch the hearts of everyone, things will change. Praise the Lord. Praise one day I asked Jesus a question like this. Jesus, there are different religions in this world. And I said, because I was in UK, I found many atheists, those who do not believe in God. 
So I said these other religions are, are they not better than the atheists, those who do not believe in you? Then the Lord inspired me like this, my son, the atheists, actually they have not lost faith in me, they have lost faith in you, priests and the church, because you have hurt them. Before God, we are all equally his children, a criminal and a victim, a prisoner and a robber, everyone equally his children is hiding inside everyone. Lift both your hands, we call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. together. convention in Italy in Rome, a Bible convention. Then that time I have shared this testimony, how I got my new passport, how this person has really helped me. After the convention, two weeks later, a lady came to speak to me, giving a testimony and she told me like this, Father, I had a problem with the immigration. I am alone here in this Italy. My husband and my two children are in India. So I want to bring them. So whenever I fill my form, I go and meet the officers, the immigration officer, a particular place that she goes to apply, then she tells that you are born in India, you bo go back to India. If we are here in Italy, even Italians don't, do not have job, then why do you bring them? So she always tries and her permit was rejected, that she cannot bring the family. So she was in big pain and problem. So then that's the time she heard this testimony. So next time when she went and she found many times she applied, it was rejected. She found the name of that woman, particular woman who accepts this document is Veronica. She decided. You know, she told me until that time she was praying, thinking, if Veronica is transferred from this place, if she die, if something happens. If somebody else come, she may get the document. That's the way she was thinking all throughout. Then she got this prayer for Rama Krishna. So now she started putting that name and praying. Be merciful to Veronica, O oh Master. Keep her safe. Bring her life to fulfillment in happiness and mercy. She said she prayed 500 times. And she went with that same document. This Veronica just looked at her face. And she just told this woman... I feel pity for you. And she just took that document. She found there were many mistakes. She herself took the pain corrected. And she said, please arrange to bring your family. I will help you. Please pray for me. Wow. This is Psalm 106 verse 46. Psalm 106 verse 46. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Psalm 106 verse 46. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Imagine this Veronica was felt pity upon this lady whom she held as a captive. Psalm 106 verse 46. So when you pray, God will cause compassion in the heart of your employer, your enemy, your lawyer, your neighbor, somebody who is against you. God can cause compassion. This lady told this woman, 
And she said, this is the same woman who was very rude to me. Now that same woman is just telling, I feel pity for you. Who caused it? God caused it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Maybe you are not talking with your neighbor, your in-laws, your father, your mother, your, in- your mother-in-law. Do you think it's all right? If you die today, what will be the situation? You need to be reconciled. Call those people whom you are not talking with. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to reconcile. We need to forgive them and pray for them. It's very important before God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to share one more testimony because the Lord reminded me in prayer, please give testimonies. Testimonies. Because you have, I know you have attended many retreats. This testimony is from my own life. I was in the seminary in formation. It takes for us 12 years to become a priest. So I had a crisis, I left, then I had a vision of Jesus, I met Jesus, and that's the way I came back and I started to serve the Lord. Then my superior, my rector, was not convinced that I'm called because I left, then I came back. So whenever I do a small mistake, he used to correct me and even publicly tell that he still doubt in my vocation. So whenever father says something or accuses me, I had a habit of writing a diary. So I don't just write the diary, I put the incident with the date, time and the witnesses. Truth and facts as it is. There were more than 20 incidents I wrote down in my diary. My whole idea, at least once, I have to confront and tell my superior what he has done was wrong. Because for me, it was an injustice. So I just want to tell him that so that he may not repeat the same thing. That's my idea. And I made sure that I will never say anything that is extra, that is not truthful, that has not exactly happened. So I just wanted to, my whole idea, just to speak to him at least once about this incident. So now, because of this, with this diary I have, now, just before my priesthood, I went to attend a retreat. In that retreat, the retreat preacher told us like this, my dear brothers, if you are going to become priests, and if Jesus is not happy with you, even if the whole world is happy and Jesus is not happy with you, your life is in vain. You are going to become his servants and your whole life is to bring glory to Jesus and bring happiness to Jesus. Jesus should rejoice in your priesthood. And you have to always ask, is Jesus happy with you? So I thought, I made a long confession. I want to ask this priest whether Jesus is happy with me, whether he can see a light about my life. So I went to him in my personal counseling. And I told him, Father, I don't take much time. As you said, I have prepared for a very good confession. And now I just want to know, is Jesus happy with me? This priest closed his eyes. Then he said, Brother, I can see darkness. Then I told him, Father, I made a confession. And what do you think that this darkness is coming from? If there is any hidden sin, you can please tell me I can make confession again. He just closed his eyes again and he told me, Brother, do you keep a diary? I said, I keep a diary. Then he said, I can see darkness is coming from this diary. Then I told him, but Father, this is a diary of my life. And there is nothing wrong there. These are only truths and facts. Then this priest told me, Brother, I don't know whether it is truth or facts. There is darkness coming from there. You asked me, Jesus is happy, and I can see there's a diary that Jesus is not happy with. I was so confused because I have no problem to burn this diary after at least once I explained to my superior what he has done, 
then I can burn it. But this priest is telling me, you have to burn this diary immediately. Then I told him, Father, let me think about it. When you don't want to do something, you will think about it. So I went to sleep. That night I could not sleep. Because I myself asked this priest, is Jesus happy with me? And the priest is telling me, Jesus is not happy. So how can I sleep? And the Lord is telling because, the priest is telling me because I keep the diary of truth and facts. That night I got a revelation. Like a word of God coming in front of me from the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. The word of God says, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. Book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down. Now the Lord is talking about the accuser. Who is the accuser? Who is the accuser? Satan. Who accuses our brethren. Accuses us before God. Let me ask you a question. Can Satan tell the truth? Yes or no? That is why we are wrong. We are deceived. We are deceived. John 8.44 says he is the liar and he is the father of all lies. His name is murderer, deceiver, accuser, blamer. The one who pretends. The one who comes in the form of angel. But you have to know, he speaks only lies to human beings. But he never speaks lies to God. That means Satan speaks only truth before God. Because God is light. God is truth. He can pretend only before humans. So he was, when he is accusing his brethren, he is accusing, talking truth and facts. He is only saying truth and facts. And the Lord is reminding me, my son, when you say you want to explain truth and facts, you are doing exactly the same what Satan does, accusing using truth and facts. You need to forgive, forget, and be humble. Immediately, I burned the diary. And later, the priest confirmed, the Lord is now showing you light. And he asked me to ask forgiveness and get the blessing from my superior. I received it. Sisters and brothers, after I was sharing this testimony that the Lord wants me never to accuse, even using truth and facts, one lady sent me an email. The title was like this, An Unterrible Diary of My Life. You know a lady sending me an email, An Unterrible Diary of My Life. That means she is telling she has a diary that cannot be torn that cannot be put into fire, telling it has all what the husband has done in her life. Maybe unknowingly, in your heart you have kept some things, quoting even the date, even the time, even the witnesses, even what he has said, you can reproduce it. But remember one thing, you are doing the same thing Satan is doing. We need to forgive. This is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Why new things are not happening in our life? Because we are not ready to let the past go. Let forgiveness come into us. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. The word of God says, Do not remember the former things 
or consider the things of old i am about to do a new thing now it springs forth do you not perceive it i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert he is telling you do not remember the former things let's read together do not remember he is telling you do not remember the former things maybe you have gone through a lot of suffering false accusations humiliations but remember the lord wants you to forgive and let the past go so that he will do something new in your life so that god can establish something very unique in your life if you can forgive and let the past go off you will receive a great miracle in your life let's kindly stand lord i need you without you i fall apart now this is also a time for an offer tree our volunteers will come to you give to the lord the maximum give to the lord the best we were conducting a retreat in the university of nairobi in kenya blessed sacrament was exposed like this we were standing beside and we are asking people to give to the lord generously and the lord reminded me like this many people have financial crisis they don't prosper some people they get money and it just disappears they are not able to do anything valuable with money is some kind of instability and stagnation in the area of finance the lord reminded me like this M- many people treat me like a beggar that is why they give me the smallest coin the smallest currency when it comes to me they always think about the smallest am i a beggar or am i a king who multiplies everything sevenfold when it comes to god i have learned it from the people of africa they give the best and the maximum i know you also do the same it's up to you our god never deceives anyone he will not take anything which he will never return no one can as the scripture says we have never given anything to him so that we may ask anything in return as we read this is romans chapter 11 this is verse 35 who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return even the money that we give to him is stolen from his pocket you know that psalm 241 the earth and everything in the earth belongs to him so take whatever you have to offer in your hand we are going to bless you lord as we lift these offerings unto you we declare you are the source of our income you are the provider of my job you receive all the glory as i offer this little money for your work for your glory let my work my business everything that i do prosper in your name the father son and the holy spirit Amen. we declare lord i need you
my righteousness. Without music, using your mouth, using your tongue, lift both your hands. You have to sing at the top of your voice. Let the Lord realize that you need Him. Everybody together, without any background music, we sing together. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. hands on your heart. All those who had a near-death experience, for example, you were supposed to die. You had, you met with accident, you have terrible sickness, you had a serious ailment, but the Lord mysteriously, miraculously brought you back to life. You may have heard your parents telling that you were supposed to die and how you came back to life, even when you were very small. All those who had such an experience that this is your second life, the Lord gave you another chance to live again. Raise your hands. Many of you, keep your hands lifted. You are lifting your hands before Jesus. You are telling, Lord, you are the reason why I am alive today. And he wants to remind you one thing. If he has brought you back to life once, he is interested in you. He loves you, he cares for you. Amen. The whole world can complain against God, but you have no right at all 
to say even a small word against God's faithfulness. He has already proved it in your life. If he has intervened in your life when you were small in 20 in 2010 he is the same today yesterday today and forever amen just say i'm grateful to you my god forgive me for this character of complaining always telling no one helped me nobody is there for me you brought me back to life give a mighty mighty clap to the lord The mountains may fall apart, Isaiah 54, 10. The hills may fall away, but my steadfast love shall not depart you. Believe it. He has already proved his love towards you. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. Lift both your hands and say, without you, I fall apart. It's you alone I thirst. It's you alone I thirst. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Once again, we sing at the top of our voice, Lord, I need you. Without music, everyone, even you are in the ground, in the tent, in the hall, in this compound, wherever you are, you are singing to your God. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my God defends my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Once again, Lord, I need you. to the Lord once again and be seated. One day I asked Jesus a question like this. My Lord Jesus, I love you so much and I want to give you a gift. Tell me, how can I make you happy? What is the gift that I can offer that you feel happy? What kind of flowers you like the most? What kind of candles you like the most? What kind of offering you like the most? I am ready to give you because you are so good and I want to bring joy to you. So when I was praying like this, asking, the Lord reminded me, my son, do you know all the flowers on this earth is created by me? When you tell me that you will offer a flower and you make me happy, that means you are going to steal from my pocket and give me that as a gift and tell me, be happy. <laughs> Psalm 24 1 says, Psalm 24 1, the earth and everything in the earth belongs to the Lord. The earth and everything in the earth belongs to the Lord. All the candles, all the flowers, all what you are trying to offer to the Lord is already belong to God. And the Lord reminded me, but like this, but my son, the one thing that makes me so happy is when you make a sincere confession. That which I have not given you are your sins. When you renounce your sin, when you make a good confession, you bring joy to my face and the Lord reminded to read Luke 15 7 Luke 15 7 I tell you there will be more joy in heaven than one who 
than all the all the righteous on one who repents repeat after me i tell you there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents let us read together just so there will be more joy in heaven there will be happiness when you confess do you want to make jesus happy yes. how can you make jesus happy make a good confession make a good confession many people have no prosperity they do many things everything fails why proverbs 28:13 proverbs 28:13 we read those who hide their sins will not prosper please repeat this word of god proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 together let us all read this word of god proverbs 28:13 together we read no one who conceals transgressions will prosper but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy once again no one who conceals transgressions will prosper but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy hiding sin is hiding the evil one and when we confess our sin i have heard this testimony from a lay brother a preacher i heard him preaching this testimony this is a child was crying unceasingly four year old boy he is keeping his finger in the ear and he is crying unceasingly yet they took him to hospital took x ray nothing could be found but the child is not stopping crying the wife is very prayerful but the husband does not go to church he says i need money as long as church cannot give money i cannot waste my time to go to church so he never blocks the wife but he does not believe in the power of prayer but the child is not stop crying even in the night the child is crying because of severe ear pain this brother gave this testimony so the wife told this man money cannot help us medicine cannot help us doctors cannot help us you are so efficient you are very intelligent but you cannot stop our son crying me as a mother my heart is breaking when my son is crying all throughout and you cannot help your son why can't you go and attend a retreat go to the church and pray not for him because the son is crying too much and he cannot help this man accepted to go and attend a retreat it's when he attended the retreat he came to know it was long 20 years he made his last confession he made his confession sincere confession in the retreat center that same time back at home something like a black small black thing fell down from the ear of this boy and the boy stopped crying when he came back home when he came back home he found that the boy is all right so the wife brought to him that small black thing it was like a, the grain of a rice it is spent it is it, it was in the ear and it got the color of the skin so the x-ray could not find it but it just came out this preacher said like this when the father confessed the son received healing when the father is hiding the sin the son is sick crying is your daughter's marriage is blocked because as a dad and a mom you are hiding sin without making proper confession did you block the prosperity of your children because as parents you are not faithful to god Sirach chapter 41 verse 7 children suffer disgrace because of the ungodly father 
Sometimes we are so much concerned about children and their life and their future and their relationship. And the Lord just wanted to remind us that the if, if the sin of the parents can in a way affect the children because sin has its consequences. Believe the confession of the parents can have more impact in the life of your children. When grace comes into you, it will not just remain inside you. It will flow even to your children. That is why we read in Isaiah 59, 21. Isaiah 59, 21. Maybe sometimes you think you are the only one attending the retreat, but the impact of this retreat is not just remaining with you. So Isaiah 59, 21. Isaiah 59, 21. And as for me, the, the, the scriptural scholars say that this is the only word of God. This is a covenant word of God that begins with thus says the Lord and ends with thus says the Lord. The scripture is like this. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouths of your children's children or out of the mouths of your children, says the Lord, from now on and forever. Please, can we read this word of God together, louder, everybody, even those who are outside, please. And as for me, Sin, if sin has its consequence, grace has also its great impact. As light is more powerful than darkness, grace is more powerful than any oppression. The very fact that you are attending this retreat, the word of God that you receive, it will go beyond and touch the hearts and lives of your children and it will produce fruit. I know a special family in UK. They are called Joel, Jesse, Thomas and Joshua. The married couple, they have two children, both have autism. But this Joshua, the younger one, has a unique gift that he knows the Bible by heart from Genesis up to Revelation. He knows it. If you just ask him, he will say the word of God. He does not know how to read, how to write. He has no sense of danger. He does not know what is thank you, what is sorry. But this boy is filled with the word of God. Mother Jessie, she said, she used to read the word of God. When Father Math used to conduct the retreat, she used to sit beside and read the Bible. She knows the word of God. That word of God that was there in Jessie went inside this boy called Joshua. This is God's word. It will never go in vain. As you make a confession, as you pray, as you do penance, as you do sacrifice, it has great impact in the life of your children. When you renounce sin, when you confess sin, it can bring healing, deliverance, prosperity, even in the life of your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is a word of God. This is Sirach chapter 4 verse 26. For a long time, I did not understand the meaning of this word of God. Sirach 4.26. The scripture goes like this. Do not be ashamed to confess your sin. And do not try to stop the current of a river. I understood the first part. Sirach 4.26. Do not be ashamed to confess your sin. You know, it's easy to understand. Just read this word of God together. Do not be ashamed to confess. And do not try to stop the current of the river. See, the first part is easy to understand. But the second part, I thought there is no connection. Do not try to stop the current of a river. Later on, in personal prayer, the Lord was revealing to me like this. Current of a river symbolizes the flow of the Holy Spirit. When you refuse to confess, you hide your sins, you are blocking the flow of the Holy Spirit inside you. That is why every confession is an act of the Holy Spirit. I have seen people saying, Father, I don't have any clarity in my life. I'm not able to take a decision in my life. I have this spirit of wavering and instability. 
where there is sin there is no clarity when we hide sin we cannot take a proper decision in our life is like a darkness ahead of us the moment we make confession things become clear because sin is a block it it is like making confession is equal to opening the flood gates of heaven powerful grace will flow to us before we go for exam before we go for interview before we go and meet your manager your employer anyone go after confession we had a retreat in maputo maputo is in mozambique this was a retreat for priests nuns and lay people after the retreat we have testimonies we told the people if you have testimony come before the blessed sacrament blessed sacrament was exposed and we told them look at the blessed sacrament and tell jesus what he has done for you then one sister came forward she looked at the blessed sacrament and she started to sing a song in her language they also speak portuguese she started to sing a song the language i don't know but when she is singing i could see the sisters the people attending the retreat they are shedding tears they feel the presence of god i don't know the song but i know if god is inside the song i felt the presence of the lord after singing she stood beside and she told the sisters my dear sisters do you know that i had the gift of singing they were surprised because they have never heard her singing and the song she was singing was very new the tune was new everything was new they were all shocked to hear such a beautiful song and with such beautiful voice she said the priest preached you have to make confession sin of commission and sin of omission you know there is something called a sin of omission have you heard about that yes a boy was asked what is sin of omission he said sin of omission means the sins i have forgotten to commit so those are not the sin of omission the good that you are supposed to do if you have not done that is called sin of omission and this sister said i knew i had this gift of singing but the first day when i joined the convent when i was singing my superior just discouraged me saying you are come not to sing but to work hard so she just felt it she said she, she thought her voice and her singing is not appreciated she stopped singing during the confession she came to know she said i got a conviction when i don't sing i block the glory of god god has given me such a great gift this is psalm 877 psalm 877 is for all the singers and dancers is a word of god for all the singers musicians and dancers psalm 877 let all the singers and the dancers alike say all my springs are from you if anybody has a gift of singing is from god no one can just become a singer all of a sudden it's a gift it's a profound gift let's read together singers and dancers alike say So if you have received such great spring from God you cannot block it and this nun said this testimony when the priest absolved me for this sin that I have not sung for my God immediately holy spirit gave me lyrics and music this is a song holy spirit gave me as a result of my confession there are people who say for the I, i don't know if there is any gift in me maybe i'm the only one born into this world having no gift one day one lady told like this father i'm very old i'm sick i heard you preaching that everybody who is born into this world has a gift but i have never find any gift in me i don't know how to sing i don't know how to preach i don't know how to dance i don't know how to lead others i think i am the only person born into this world Uh, having no gift at all so he just asked her do you pray then she said father the only thing i know is prayer i pray in the morning in the night always father i pray we told her that is the greatest gift thank god this is the greatest gift today as you are here if you think your gifts are hidden sin hides divine gifts and talents when you confess 
everything will change and we should confess every sin. One day we were preaching the same in Kenya, Nairobi, about the importance of confession. Then one old lady, after the preaching, going out from the sacristy, an old lady came and held my hand and she told me, Father, I have three problems to make confession. The first problem is that I have fear when I see the priest and I forget every sin that I have prepared. Just to say one or two, then I don't know what happens. So because of fear, I cannot make confession. It's my big problem. Then she is telling me she forgets. The first thing is fear. The second thing, she forgets. Then she told me, Father, it's long 32 years I made my last confession. I don't know the formula. I don't know how to make a confession. We told her, don't worry at all. Do you know how to write? We have a prayer book called Christ is All. It has the examination of conscience. I just asked her, do you know how to read and write? She said, she knows. We gave her a book and we told her, go through the examination of conscience. Take a piece of paper. Write down all your sins. Don't write your name, only the sins. Don't write the sins you have already confessed. But in case if you have a doubt whether you have confessed it or not some years back, write it that also. Not to give to the priest, but only for you. Write it in a piece of paper so that you don't forget. Go to the priest. Sometimes our confession is not in the confessional box. We don't have enough boxes outside in the chair. Two chairs. Priest sit in chair, one chair, she has to sit in another chair. We told her, you take this piece of paper in your hand. Go to the priest. Don't look at his face. You go, just sit in front of the chair, keep your head down, take that piece of paper and you say, Father, it is long 32 years I made my last confession. And then you read and you say you don't know how to make a confession, you don't know the formula and you read all your sins then you keep your head again down and you say, forgive me, Father. Then the priest will absolve you, give you a penance. And he will tell you, go in peace. The moment you hear, go in peace, get up and run away. Your sins are forgiven. We told this woman, your sins are forgiven, not because you know the formula. Your sins are forgiven because you know the sins by heart. God looks into the heart. Saint Maria Faustina wrote in her diary in the confessional box, Christ is hiding in the person of priest. And he is waiting to pour out his mercy upon the penitent. There's a beautiful picture Faustina said that through the confessional box, that rays of mercy is flowing to the penitent. Remember, no priest died for you. It's Christ. And you need that forgiveness through the confession, through the praise. It's very important. New doors will be opened. New breakthrough will take place. New venues will be opened when we renounce sin. That's why I told you from my experience, as a priest since then I know, Jesus is extremely happy. When a person come, kneel down, make a confession. The, the most important part of this London retreat organized by our fathers in this parish is confession. And remember, confession is not counseling. Counseling is not confession. Confession is a sacrament. And you receive forgiveness of sins. Confession is not sharing your problem. Counseling is sharing your problem. But when, and we have seen that we have only one problem, this problem is called sin. And when we renounce this sin, confess our sin, our problems will also be solved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I do remember this particular person, he came, he, his problem is shivering on the feet. When he sees small children, his legs start shivering. He just stand, legs start shivering. He's a big officer, but he cannot control his shivering. He tried treatment, psychological advice, many things, but he cannot stop this uh, strange kind of fear that his legs start shivering. 
somebody advised him he came for the retreat you know even the psychology say what our mind hides the body will bring it out what our mind hides the body will bring it out when he came for prayers to know how god can heal him from this problem the lord gave this word of god from psalm chapter 32 verse 3 to 5 psalm 32 3 to 5 while i kept silence according to bible scholars silence means when i did not confess my sin when i did not confess my sin my body wasted away all day long all through my groaning all day long for day and night your hand was heavy upon me my strength was dried up as by the summer heat then i acknowledged my sin to you then i confessed my sin to you and i did not hide my iniquity i said i will confess my transgressions and you forgave the guilt of my sin praise the lord when i did not confess my sin my flesh became sick but then i acknowledged my sin then we asked him about his last confession he said it's long six months he made his confession we asked him in detail is there any sin that you have hidden you did not confess he said he does not remember but after some time he went to the chapel he prayed and he said there was a time he was fighting with his wife and his newborn baby while fighting accidentally he stepped on this baby and the baby died years back he never thought it is a sin because it was out of accident like a mistake because he never renounced it his mind did not forgive him he confessed never again he was affected by this problem i acknowledged my sin and you forgave the guilt of my sin sisters and brothers we are all sinners somebody asked me do you have any desire asked me a question private question i said i have a great desire he asked me what is your desire i told this person my great desire is to die immediately after my confession when a priest absolves me in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit your sins are absolved my desire is to have a heart attack immediately and die in the confessional box itself then they asked me why such a desire i said i know if i am given two more minutes i can commit 200 sins more and i can lose the paradise because we are sinners we are so vulnerable we need his grace if there is no confession there is no saints we are all sinners but we don't want to be afraid of this sin many are carrying heaviness because we don't know the importance of this great great sacrament of confession our priests are available my dear sisters and brothers they are here and i was told that there is confession in this parish every day i have seen in the notice board you are so blessed where i am in rwanda 40000 people three priests we are struggling because how many confessions we have we can hear here you have priests and they are available all throughout and you need confession please lift both your hands pray after me heavenly father, heavenly father. Help, me help me to make a good confession I want to renounce, want to renounce every, sin. every sin. Remember, you don't want to confess the sins you have already confessed. Once confessed is forgiven forever. The sins you have never confessed, the sins that Holy Spirit can remind you, confess only those sins. And tomorrow is the day that the priests are, more priests are available for confession. Come early, make sure that you confess your sin. If you want to write down your sins also do it that is not for the priest only for you later on you tear it and submit at the feet of the lord praise the lord, praise the lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah and don't share your problem that is not confession just confess your sins immediately 
you will have the breakthrough praise the lord praise the lord i do remember this person in mumbai in thabo divine retreat center we have retreat that's from sunday up to wednesday so after this retreat we have seen that uh, he came and he said like this father i was observing your ministry you called out many names my name was never mentioned you mentioned the sicknesses of many kinds my sickness is never mentioned i am now going back empty maybe i may be the only person going back empty because i was listening carefully nothing of my problem is mentioned father can you tell me why god is so angry with me he is not merciful to me father i can see maybe something is wrong i can see god has forgotten me completely and i think i cannot just live like this i also came attended like everyone but i think god is angry with me so he just started to pray he is very serious he has many sicknesses problem with the children marriage uh, cancer so many things he said nothing is answered so when we started to pray we saw a vision that jesus is standing beside him like this being bound like this like he is standing before pontius pilot so i just told him but i can see jesus is standing very close to you but being bound by you he told me father i cannot see anything we told him you cannot see because it's a vision it's a clear sign that you yourself made him helpless then he said father how can i do that so we asked him did you confess you know during the retreat there's a confession he said i confess direct i told him there is no direct you have to go to jesus go to the priest and make confession then he said there is a priest who hurt me so i told him if the priest hurt you i told him i'm very very sorry so he told me father the priest hurt me so that's why i don't confess i believe in jesus more than in priest i told him but god gave the priest you need the priest 1 2 corinthians 5:20 5 two corinthians 5:20 christ has made an appeal to you be reconciled with god through the ambassadors of christ that is through the priest then he is telling me father how can a priest hurt to me he asked me how can a priest hurt to me i told him i am very sorry but i have a question to ask you we prayed and we asked him do you pray for priest i just asked him then he said i i don't pray for priest priests are supposed to pray for me then why do i pray for them i told him you are wrong in every holy mass priests keep their hands open like beggars and they ask the christians pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice may be acceptable to god he priests are perfect they need no prayer they need no grace why do they beg he told me no i have never done that i told him don't worry today itself you pray for the priest make a confession then you go back god will open a door for you sisters and brothers we told him to pray just a three hour father for the priest for the confessor because the confessor has to reveal to you divine wisdom because he is going to forgive your sins as in the person of christ he made confession after some time he was he had gone and he came back with a message in his phone he told me father i got a new job immediately after confession he got a job praise the lord praise the lord i told you i told you i told you the vision jesus was standing very close not far how far is jesus a confession away the moment you confess you are blessed your job your promotion your marriage your children your visa your permit your journey to canada to uk a sincere confession open mighty doors in front of you praise the lord praise the lord let's all kneel down i surrender here i am lord i want to surrender my life to you everything unto your feet there is nowhere else i can go i come to you my lord here 
here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all.
once again together like a rushing wind. Jesus breathes within. Keep your hands on your heart. The Lord is here. He's intervening in your life. This city, God is calling you. God is blessing you. Jasmine, call it. Viola, Olga, audit. Shibani, Ruben, Joachim, Jackie, Conchida, Lawrence, Janice, Rocky, Joel Fernandez, Kelly, Sylvester, Georgina, Alistair, Monica. The Lord knows you by name. He is here to intervene in your difficulties. Jim, Callum, Christo, Melanie, Bernard, Peter, Martin, Eltos, Sally, Henry. Sabu, Rob, Jos, Pat, Helena, Mystery, Harriet, Esther, Maria, Lois, Kennedy, Joy, Aaron, Hazelyn, Ian, Charlotte, Paloma, somebody who has a severe spinal cord related problem, the Lord is healing you. Somebody has severe disc prolapse, the disc is damaged and you find it very hard even to stand for long sit for long God is healing you somebody having severe arthritis you want to kneel down but you cannot the Lord is healing you somebody having severe very cause vein problem you are a nurse the Lord is healing you Sunida, God is blessing you. 
Anita, God is blessing you. A mother is praying for her son who is in the seminary so that he may survive and be a priest. The Lord is answering the unceasing prayer of a mother who has a son who is in the seminary going through a kind of a crisis. The Lord is appreciating many who are praying every day for priests. Though you don't have priests, you are not related to priests, you are praying for priests every day with sacrifices. God is highly, highly appreciating that prayer. Somebody who never miss the three o'clock night Divine Mercy Chaplet, God is using you as a great instrument of blessing. Your generations will be blessed by the Lord for this commitment of asking for God's mercy. A police officer, you are a police officer, God is blessing you. Many years you are praying for a promotion, God is going to intervene. There are some you are praying for your family to join you. Long time you have tried. God is bringing your family to you. Nigel, God is blessing. Somebody, your family, you, your husband, your children are all in different countries and you wanted to be in one country. The Lord is answering that prayer. The Lord is blessing someone who is attending this retreat from Ethiopia. The Lord knows from where you are and He loves you. He's telling you are so precious to me. Tanya, God is calling you by name. God is just standing beside, wiping your tears. The Lord is blessing a priest belongs to the Pillar Fathers as an answer to your prayer. God is blessing Irene. I know my daughter, I know you. How much you are humble, you never fight. And the Lord is supporting you. Justin, God is blessing you. Carla, God is blessing you. Somebody who were trying to get a driving license, you tried many times. The Lord is removing that block, you will pass. Somebody who failed in your exam to go abroad many times for few marks, God himself is going to answer for you and you will get through. Thank the Lord for his intervention. Naila, God is blessing you. Samuel, God is blessing you. Sebi, God is blessing you. Many with a severe back pain, God is healing you. Some with a severe acidity problems, God is setting you free. Somebody have severe skin problem and you are so much upset like psoriasis. God himself is touching you and healing you. Somebody your eyesight has almost gone. You have to do some kind of cataract operation. God is healing you. Some with a severe neck pain. God is releasing you from that pain. Let's kindly stand before the Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Lord, you please create a clean heart in me. For the Noel is going to pour out the holy water upon each and every one who are here as we are asking the Lord to create in us a clean heart.
kindly be seated before the Lord before the final blessing let us prepare for a good confession we know the 10 commandments i am your god you shall not have any strange gods before me you shall not take the name of the lord in vain we have to keep the sabbath day the day of the lord holy we have to honor our father and our mother you shall not kill shall not commit adultery shall not steal you shall not bear false witness you shall not covet your neighbor's wife you shall not covet your neighbor's goods you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind then you shall love your neighbor as yourself you shall attend mass on sundays and on holy days of obligation you shall confess your sins you shall receive the sacrament of eucharist you shall observe the days of fasting and abstinence you shall help to provide for the needs of the church we are with jesus every confession is an act of the holy spirit is the one who leads us to confess he's asking you did you deny or doubt god's existence did you refuse to believe god's revelation did you believe in or use horoscope fortune telling good luck charms tarot cards oja boards or reincarnation do you deny that you were a catholic do you abandon the catholic faith for any period of time do you despair or presume on god's mercy do you neglect prayer for a long time do you fail to pray daily especially in your family do you blaspheme god or take god's name in vain curse or break an oath or vow do you miss mass on a sunday or on a day of holy day of obligation through your own fault do you always reverent in the presence of the most blessed sacrament do you all entirely inattentive in holy mass do you arrive at holy mass late through your own fault do you leave the holy mass early do you unnecessarily do work on sunday do you disobey or disrespect your parents or your legitimate superiors do you neglect your duties as a husband or wife or parents or children do you fail to actively take an interest in the religious education and formation of your children do you fail to educate yourself concerning the teachings of the church do you give a full day's work in return for a full day's pay do you give a fair wage to your employees do you give scandal or bad example by what you say or do especially to the young do you contribute to anyone's abandoning of the catholic faith are you impatient angry envious unkind proud jealous or revengeful hateful towards others or lazy do you give bad example or abuse drugs drink alcohol fight or quarrel do you physically injure or kill anyone do you had an abortion or advised or supported an abortion do you participate in or approve of the grave evil known as mercy killing or assisted suicide do you attempt suicide or physically harm yourself do you willfully entertain impure thoughts or desires do you dress immodestly or provocatively do you use impure or suggestive words do you tell impure stories or jokes or listen to them do you deliberately look at impure television internet plays pictures or movies 
Do you deliberately read or send impure material? Do you perform impure arts on yourself? Masturbation, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. Do you marry or advise others to marry outside the church? Do you abuse marriage rights? Are you unfaithful to your marriage vows? Do you keep company with someone else's spouse? Do you practice artificial birth control or was or your spouse permanently sterilized? Do you steal, cheat, help or encourage others to steal, cheat or keep stolen goods? Do you make restitution for stolen goods? Do you deliberately fail to fulfill your contracts or pay your bills? Do you give or accept bribes? Do you rashly gamble or speculate or deprive your family of the necessities of life? Do you tell lies? Deliberately in order to deceive or injure others, slander or calumny. Do you commit perjury? Do you vote in accordance with a properly informed conscience, in a way consistent with the teachings of the church? Are you uncharitable in thought, word or deed? Do you gossip or reveal the faults or sins of others? Do you fail to keep secrets that you should have kept? Do you eat meat knowingly on the days of abstinence? Do you fast as required on the days of abstinence? Do you fail to receive Holy Communion during Easter season? Do you receive Holy Communion without proper preparation? Do you make bad confession deliberately? Do you fail to contribute to the support of the church? Do you, did you forgive those who hurt you? Lord, I'm sorry. Father, I have sinned. Let's kneel down. We are going to receive the final blessing. Lord, I am sorry for every sin I have committed through my words, thoughts and actions. Father, I have sinned. Forgive me. coming to you to bless you draw me close to you 
Lord, bless me, heal me. All those who are sick, raise your right hand to the Lord. The Lord is here. Call His holy name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. At the top of your voice, call His name. Don't look at anyone. He is coming to you. He is blessing you. He is setting you free. Call His name louder. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Continuously. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Deliver us, Lord. Wash us in your blood. Set us free, Abba Father. Set us free, Lord Jesus. Shanda Bahala Batira Bahala Rabaria. Somebody who had a stroke on your left side is affected. God is restoring your health completely back to you. The Lord is restoring your health. Somebody who had a heart related problem, you are using a kind of a machine. The Lord is restoring your health, removing that instrument using in the heart. Many who had a block in the tubes, God is removing the block. Somebody you are not able to conceive, God is healing you. Many who had severe migraine, sleeplessness, God is restoring sleep back to you. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. in the ICU you are praying for this patient God is setting them free miraculously right now somebody who has a serious heart problem and even tried treatments in the past 
God is recovering that person completely from heart related issues a child who is suffering from epilepsy God is intervening in the life of this child and God is healing this child from this epilepsy lift both your hands once again we declare it's not money it's not job it's not anything you are all i want you are all i have ever needed Join your hands. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving we sing the hymn to mother mary as we go home tomorrow is the day of confession too please come a little early may the lord give you a safe return journey back home bring your friends those who are sick for the retreat tomorrow we in a special way pray for all the children and day after tomorrow for all the families let us sing to mother mary as we go home